unveiling the wonders in the word, part one. If I were you as officials, I would take my seat at this moment. Five objectives today to cover for the few minutes, very few minutes we have in this teaching session. Number one, we want to look at the currency of the economy of the kingdom. What is the currency of the economy of the kingdom? How come some are flourishing in this kingdom and others within the kingdom have nothing to show? Number two objective is what does the currency of the kingdom work for? What do I stand to gain? By having this currency and utilizing this currency. Number three objective, and we'll break this into the various services, what are the five wonders in the world? We want to look at five of them within the first three services or the three services of today. Five wonders in the world. And of course, I'm talking about the word of God. Number four objective, how do I tap into the wonders of the world? I want to tap into it. How do I tap into it? Everybody has a Bible, but not everyone is tapping into the, into the wonders contained therein. And then the fifth objective today is that by the time it is 9.45, there will have been a release of special miracles. And I mean miracles that you so desire Amen. in the name of Jesus. Now let's quickly begin. The currency of the economy of the kingdom of God is revelation. Revelation is the currency of the economy of the kingdom. In Mark chapter 4 verse 11, he said, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. They don't make sense. But unto you it is given to know the mysteries. Unto you revelation is accessible. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, as Psalm 119, and I believe verse 23 says, or 18, sorry, says, Open thou my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things from this law. I pray in the name of Jesus from today, your eyes will begin to see wonders in this book. I didn't hear amen from someone who is ready. What does this currency of the kingdom work for? It works everywhere. It works every time. It works for everyone. It works for everything. <laughs> and it never suffers depreciation. The dollar still goes down and goes up. But in the kingdom, revelation is always on the increase. What does this currency of the kingdom work for? Let's just pick one of it. It works for everything. You need healing, it works for it. You need breakthrough, it works for it. You need deliverance, it works for it. Therefore, we can submit by saying our purchasing power in the kingdom is revelation determined. I am here standing and will be ministering to you in about 15 minutes on miracle signs and wonders. It is all revelation driven. What I know that I put to work makes me stand out when others are confused. What kept us standing in the midst of COVID-19 is what? Revelation. What kept your church building in the midst of a pandemic Without offering, collected from any member or announced on the altar, is revelation. Revelation. Now lift up your hands. Within these last three months of the year, I'm speaking to somebody what you have never seen in three years. By revelation will take place in your life and family these last three months. 
I like that amen to come from the deep recesses of your heart. Revelation. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. See what the word says. According to his divine power, has given unto us how many things? Let me hear you first service. How many things? How many things? Does that include miracles? All things that pertain to life and to godliness, but it will only be accessible through knowledge. Revelation. Revelation. We are separated in this kingdom not by ordination, but by revelation. You can be a brother and be leading pastors. That's why I'm bothered for places like this that are so temperamental about titles. Your title doesn't determine your entitlement. I would rather be a brother with light than an ordained worker in darkness. Revelation. Your bank has no regard for your title when it comes to redrawal. It is what you deposited that you can redraw. That is how the kingdom operates. If you don't have it, you have not seen it, you cannot take it. For as far as your eyes can see, will I give to you. Lift up your hands. I'm speaking to somebody who will catch this. By October 24th, when we step into the faith dome, yes, your life then and your life now will have no resemblance. Please be sensitive. The Lord told me, he said, this is the end of one era and the beginning of a new one. In three weeks, there's going to be such a dramatic switch. I'm talking to somebody who doesn't look like it. But from this book this month, you will catch things that will make you manifest the kingdom. Amen. Now, please follow. The light you walk in determines the life you live. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 7. It says, light is sweet. And it is a pleasant thing for the eyes to behold the sun. For instance, when you encounter light concerning sanctification, you conquer sin without stress. Psalm 119 verse 9 to 11. Where without shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to thy word. Another example, when you encounter light on your rights to healing, health, and wholeness from the world, we dominate the world of sickness and disease without struggles. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. He took our sicknesses. He took our diseases. When we encounter light, number three, from the world on our redemptive right to financial fortune, we dominate the world of lack and want without stress. He said, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that has given thee power to get wealth. That you may, that he may establish the covenant. So if you don't know the covenant, how will you have the power? If you don't understand the covenant, how will you have the power? If you are not walking in the covenant, how will you have the power? Example number four, when we encounter light from the world on our far above status, we live among witches and wizards like they are not important because they are not. Light from the world. So we can say in conclusion that the word shapes our world. For the Lord sent a word into Jacob and it had lighted upon Israel. I'd like you therefore to begin to hunt for personal rema. This word was sent into a man. It is one thing for us to have corporate rema. It's another thing to have personal rema. I know how I stepped out of sickness. It's not a scripture I've heard anybody share from. God used Goliath and David to path a way for me out of sickness. Who has ever heard of using David and Goliath for miracles? When it is your word, it is tailor-made. They call it in the realm of, or, or, or in the school of, 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 of fashion for men. They call it bespoke. It is tailor-made. Everything is measured to fit. 
in the name of Jesus, today is that new day for you. Amen. Now, let's look at some wonders in the world. I think we'll take two and then <laughs> we need to fly. The first wonder in the world is that God's word carries his nature. <laughs> God's word carries God's nature. When you see men walking on the earth or in this world like gods, they have caught something from the word. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. 2 Peter chapter 1, begin from verse 3, please. Verse 3. I want it from verse 3. First, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine nature has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, but this will come through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. Number four, verse four, please. Whereby are given unto us exceeding, look at this, great and precious promises from the world that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature. The question therefore is, can COVID catch a man with divine nature? Let me hear you answer, please. Can someone with divine nature be limited in this world? No. Let me hear you louder, please. No. Okay, come on. Let me hear you the loudest you can. No. But this divine nature is transmitted from the world. From the world. That ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Divine nature. Now, this divine nature begins with godliness. And that's what we looked at last month. Psalm 119, verse 9 to 11. Where will a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to your word. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Many want the miraculous side of God without the cleansing side of God. God is a holy God. So divine nature begins its expression in holiness. First Peter chapter 1, verse 16. There you go, you have it. What more? This divine nature doesn't just get us clean, it fires us up. Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9. Jeremiah 20 verse 9. Then I said I will not make mention of him, nor speak anymore in his name. But his word is like fire shot up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearance, and I could not stay. It fires us up. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 2. Is this not a brand plucked out of fire? Everyone that claims to carry God's nature is a fire brand walking around. Carries the fire of God. Why? Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29. I believe that's it. Our God is a consuming fire. So if we carry the consuming fire's nature, we should consume some things around us. Fires us up. Fires us up. Number two, which will be our focus for this first service is God's word carries healing power. Healing power. We can dissect healing and power. Now, look at this. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4, where the word of the king is, where the word, the word of the king is, where the word of the king is, there is power. But what kind of power? One kind of power where the word of the king is, is healing power. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 to 25, one of those scriptures the Lord dawned on me early this year. He said, and Jesus went all around Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and look at this, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And what is this gospel of the kingdom? It includes healing all sicknesses and all diseases among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments. And those which were possessed with devils. My God. And those that were lunatic. And those that had palsy. And he healed them. 25. And there followed him great multitude of people from all Galilee and from the Acropolis and from Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond Jordan. The gospel of the kingdom is a healing and deliverance gospel. We can't run away from it. 
The reason why people are running away from it is because they lack the light for it. God's word carries healing power. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. Oh, my God. Matthew 8, please, verse 17, not Matthew 1. Matthew 8, 17. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Lift up your hands where you are. In the authority of the name of Jesus, anyone that came in here with any form of sickness, because I'm preaching to you the gospel of the kingdom, anyone that came in here with any form of disease, I decree in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that sickness, that disease, that oppression drops off right now. Amen. Let me hear the loudest amen. amen. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body upon the tree. That we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. <laughs> Luke chapter 4 verse 32. His word was with power and they were astonished at his doctrine. For his word was with power. The good news is, his word was not just with power, it is still with power. Romans chapter 1 verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Because it is the power of God unto salvation to as many as believe. Luke chapter 5, my God, verse 17 to 19. Luke chapter 5 verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching that the Pharisees and the doctors of the law were sitting by and were come from every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal. Lift up your hands where you are in the name of Jesus. Everything that you call discomfort in your body by the power that is present in the world to heal, I decree your total healing and deliverance right now. Amen. Now, place the next verse. And behold, they brought a man on a bed which was taken with palsy and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And you know the story? Once he got into the midst of the world. Jesus is the world. Now you are seated in the midst of the world. And the Lord told me, he said, today we are not having healing room, we are having healing river. Therefore, wherever you are seated in the auditorium or in the overflow area, or you are watching online, may the healing river oozing from the altar locate you where you are. I mean every trace of sickness, every trace of disease, every trace of pain, every trace of strain disappears in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I'd like you to catch this picture from God's word. And I want mighty acts right now to come up. The Lord gave me this in the year 2017, 2017, 2018. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. When I give you something, use it again. Hear this. Everything you brought on your back today as a discomfort. Now, I'm, I'm dwelling on the cases of sickness. Everything you brought today on your back as a form of discomfort. Between now and 945, as the Lord liveth, there will not be any trace of it again. Now, have a clear look at this. Anemia. HIV, AIDS, fibroid, obesity, STDs, COVID-19, diabetes, skin disease, depression, pneumonia, stroke, liver disease, cancer, COPD, migraine. Now, anything that represents anything you are struggling with right now, because he took it away from you, I decree it drops off you right now. He took our sickness. He took our disease. He took away our pain. He took away the sickness. Generational or temporal. I decree right now in the authority of the name of Jesus as I am speaking this power loaded word to you. Anything that you are struggling with in your body because Jesus took it. It ceases to remain in your body from now. Now hear this whether it was passed down to you or not. And there are many that were not mentioned here. Cases that I suffered with myself. I'm talking of life. I had heart problems before. Life. 
I'm talking about all kinds of all kinds of sicknesses. God who set me upon my feet and is keeping me standing. I am stronger today than when I was 20. I decree in the name of Jesus by this revelation about to be displayed on you right now. Everything you came in here with within this next few moments, you will look for them and not find them again. I said you will look for them and not find them again. You will look for them and not find them again. Now as you are saying amen, that healing is taking place in your body. Anyone with any internal organ issues in the authority of the name of Jesus, I decree everyone with internal organ issues, your organs are replaced right now. I said your organs are replaced right now. Your organs are replaced right now. Deformed heart, challenged kidneys, livers, all kinds of issues, all kinds of issues. As the Lord God liveth, I've not yet started showing you the light of that scripture. Please, Matthew 8, 17. I want you to see the light of that scripture. Why will he take something away from you and the devil put it back on you? You are either ignorant or you are stupid. It's one of the two. He took it away. Then the devil brought it back and put it. And you are accepting it. It is for two reasons. Either ignorance or stupidity. But in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, from the greatest health challenge to the minute health challenge, I decree right now by this revelation that is about to break loose upon you, your healing is confirmed in the name of Jesus. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah. Now let's check what did Isaiah say. That's where you build up light from. Please place that, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our, oh, Shabte Krotaya. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded. Now, can you imagine your Jesus wounded? And then you are wounded again. How can your Jesus be initially wounded? And then you are, you are there watching the devil wound you again. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, Yakarada, the almighty God, the creator of the universe, was beaten so that you will not be beaten. He was wounded so you will not be wounded. He was bruised, so you will not be bruised. Therefore, I command the devil, who is placing that sickness or disease upon you, to get his filthy hands off you in the name of Jesus. Now, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, with his stripes, not we will be. We are here. Isaiah said we are healed. We cannot say we will be healed. We are healed. Somebody shout, I am healed. I am healed. Woo! By his stripes, I am. 2017, the Lord, I mean, is all over the internet. He gave me life, this picture, copied from no man. He said, watch it. I carried it. How can I carry it and watch you carry it again? Ay, 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 ay. He was wounded. He was bruised. Now, look at how Matthew's gospel puts it. Matthew 8, verse 16. Verse 16. Begin from verse 16. Matthew 8, please, verse 16. When the evil was come, they brought unto him many, many, many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the evil spirits with his word. And he healed. How many, please? Ah, let me hear you right. How many, please? All that were sick. Jesus atus ariado kata. That it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by Isaiah that we just read. Saying himself. The Lord told me, I didn't delegate anyone to take it. I didn't send my angels. Himself. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who took it? 
Let me hear you right now. Who took it from you? Who took it from you? Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. First Peter puts it this way, chapter 2 and verse 24, if you have it. Who his own self. It's amazing that we have not focused on who took it. We have largely focused on the taking and forgotten who took it. The personality that took it is the, is the rema. It's not what was taken, it's who took it. Now, there are people who can take things from you and someone greater brings it. But there are people who take things from you that there is no one greater than them. Who can collect what they have taken from them? Because for it to be, oh my God, I just heard him. The anointing is heavy. If he took it from you and you have it, it means the devil took it from him. But how can Jesus take it? And the devil go back and say, what takest thou? And collect it from the devil and bring it back from Jesus and bring it back on you. Is it possible, please? You know what I just heard him say? Anything you are feeling in your body is lying symptoms. Just simply waiting for revelation. You can't have it. That's where that depth comes from, where you can stand and say, I cannot be sick. They say, what are you feeling? It is a lying symptom. And today, every lying symptom drops off your body in the name of Jesus. God took away hypertension from me took away heart disease from me, took away diabetes from me. I am standing and testing regularly. It is gone forever. The Lord who healed my body, that same Jesus heals your body right now. Now, give me the rope. Give me the rope. Give me the rope. Now, what does that mean? Let me have three pastors. Pastor Chi, come with two other people. Now, listen to this. Take light from that. He took All right, thank you, Jesus. Give me the top of this. All right. It means he came and collected it. Collected. Watch, watch, just watch. Collected it. Place it in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He took. He didn't watch. He took. He took. He took. Now, just imagine him coming to you right now. And I'm talking about Jesus Hallelujah. collecting this from you. Hallelujah. He took. Hallelujah. He took. Hallelujah. He took. Hallelujah. Now, place Matthew 8 17. And let's see what happened. Place it on the screen, please. Matthew 8 17. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took. Who took it? Jesus. Now, just imagine, I'm not Jesus, but for the picture of this, Jesus took it. So he came to Isaac and collected it. But that's not where it ends. He bear. <laughs> now, leave this. Give it to me. So this is what he did. Put it on my back. On my back. Hallelujah. Without any help. Hallelujah. And this is how he went to the cross. Hallelujah. He carried it. He carried that sickness. He carried that disease. He said you don't have to carry it anymore. That's why the scripture says. If they had known. They would have never crucified. The Lord of glory. Because he took it to the cross. Took your sickness. Took your disease. He was in pain carrying it. My father, why hast thou forsaken me? He carried it all. 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 And he went to the cross. He carried it all. And he went to the cross. He carried it all. And he went to the cross. He carried it all. And he went to the cross. And John chapter 19 and verse 30, when he hung on the cross, he said, It is. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, everything you are carrying right now upon your back, I decree Jesus 
has taken it away, never to return again. I said, never to return again. I said, never to be returned again. So he took COVID. He took hypertension. He took heart disease. He took cancer. He took liver cirrhosis. He took every satanic attack. He took it from you. He took fibroid. He took it from you. Therefore, I command the devil to take his filthy hands off you in the name of Jesus. I command him to take his filthy hands off you in the name of Jesus. He took. I had a shali. He took it. He took it. He took it. Therefore, leave him to take it. Don't collect what he has taken from you. Don't collect it back from him. As you keep the light of this scripture, of Matthew, he, he, said, he took. He didn't take it and drop it there. He took it and placed it on himself. Therefore, the devil came late. Because Isaiah said he took. Now look at Matthew 8, 17. He said, with his stripes. Huh? First Peter 2, 24. With his stripes. Look at this. With his stripes. Ye were. Isaiah said you are. So by first Peter, it is past. Ye were. Therefore, in the next few moments, there will be a confirmation that everything he took from you is nowhere to be found in your body again. In the name of Jesus. Please take it out. God bless you. Now keep your hands lifted up. Get on the keys for me as I minister right now. Just keep your hands lifted up. Something is about to happen. The miraculous like we have never seen is about to take place. Just lift your hands where you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am the Lord that healed thee. Just keep your hands. If you came with any sickness, this is your time. You came with any disease, this is your time. Let me first minister to issues and I'd like you to see yourself at the altar testifying. Because those who do not believe in miracles cannot experience them. This is not half of the teaching, but it's been interrupted. Lift your hands. You sent your word. Don't sing along with me, I'll minister. And you heal my disease. Just back up, that's all, don't leave. You are the Lord, my healer. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and I heal your disease. I am He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Now place your hands over any area of your body where you anticipate the mighty hand of God. And thought my soul. Ah, something happened. And I, I know he touched and me. Something wonderful happened. And I, I know. You are 
by the law that he led me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word like you did this morning. You sent your word. And it is my disease. touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, what joy fills my soul. Something wonderful happened and now Two things will be happening right now. Take a piece of paper. Any area where you desire a special miracle, aside healing and deliverance, write it down. Healing and deliverance, don't write it down. Any area where you desire a special miracle, delay in immigration, all of that, God has not forgotten. Miracle marriage, freedom from fibroid, business breakthrough, whatever it is, write it down. Special miracles outside of healing. Someone here, who feels separated from the Lord? You know you do not have a true relationship with Jesus. While that is going on, you can bring your paper with you to the altar. I would please like to pray for you. And then the next group that will be coming forward is those that will be testifying of miracles, signs, and wonders. But you know in your heart that there is a separation between you and God. Take your bags, your Bibles, quickly come. Do your own writing at the altar. Maybe it's your first time in church. It doesn't matter. I'm right here waiting for you. You invited somebody. Tell them I'll come with you. Let's come and pray together at the altar. The healing river is flowing from here. Make your way. God bless you as you come. Those watching online as well, get ready. We'll be praying together with you online. Your life will never remain the same. God bless you. I need the officials to please help them. You want to rededicate your life to Christ? There is a separation between you and Jesus. Quickly make your way right now. God bless you. I'm waiting. There are a number of you. Quickly come. Quickly come. Hospitality, please help them make their way as quickly as we can. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. The altar is open. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. I want to make it right with Jesus. Just come. Just come. God bless you. Just come. Just come. Others are responding. People have left you behind. Quickly come. It may be too late. If you are not done writing, you can bring your papers. Bring all of that towards the altar. We'll pray with you. Pray for you. Your life will never remain the same. You are coming. Quickly come. Quickly come. God bless you. Make your way very quickly. We're running out of time. I'm waiting for five more people. This may be the last chance you get. Don't let pride or indecision keep you behind. Quickly come. God bless you. Quickly come. 
those who are coming for the first time, you are beside them, tell them I'll go with you. Let's go and pray together. You want to come? Come. Come if you are coming. Quickly come. 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 Is that for the first time or you're rededicating your life to Jesus? Make your way quickly. There are people who must respond quickly and quicker. Quickly come. Those of us in front, I'm about to pray. In the congregation, make sure you are writing whatever you desire. I place your right hand. The greatest miracle that takes place in anybody's life is the miracle of salvation. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, say after me, Jesus, today I come to you just as I am. Forgive me all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a child of God. Jesus, today I confess that you are my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for I'm now born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for these very precious and sincere brothers and sisters that have made this decision today. May their decision today keep them walking with you the remaining days of their lives. Amen. When you shall return in your glory, none shall be missing. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Open your eyes. I want pastors to attend to them in two minutes and bring them back. Please open your eyes. Look at our pastor there. Just follow him in just a moment. He will speak to you in just a moment. Please follow him this way. He will bring you uh, back right into the auditorium. Hallelujah. Now place your hand wherever there is any pain. Make sure they are connected. There will be miracles taking place in that room. I want another pastor. Please follow them. Another pastor. Make sure they don't use papers to distract them. Now place your hand wherever you desire a miracle in your body. Let's start from there. Now I want you to be sensitive. Cases will be called out as are revealed. And that is not called out doesn't mean that Jesus is not there to attend to you because what he says to one, he says to all. Now place your hand wherever you are. Father, in the authority of the name of Jesus. Yes, I see that person with eye issues, eye problems, particularly in the right eye. Now in the authority of the name of Jesus, be healed in that eye in the name of Jesus. Anyone that had a medical report of arthritis, there are about three of you in this church, right now, in this service. A medical report of arthritis, you've had terrible bone pains. Now just watch it, I'm not the healer. I have no capacity. I was sick, he healed me, so I can't claim anything. I'm talking about Jesus, the healer. Now, every case of arthritis, there are quite a number, especially women, elderly women. Now, every case of arthritis in the authority of the name of Jesus be healed right now. Amen. Just watch, there's somebody here with terrible pain on their spine. Terrible pain on their spine. <laughs> Lord, I will say. A creative miracle is taking place. One person's shorter leg is growing out right now. No one has any hand in it. Jesus is the one stretching. You'll be shocked. You've had a visible shorter leg. Right now, as you are, as you are, as you are in this service connected, right now, that shorter one, I believe, is the left leg. That short, you just, just check it. You used to walk. How you walk, you bend. It's visible. Now, you'll be shocked. Can God do that? Is there anything impossible for him? Now, back to the spinal issues. C4. Any spine-related injury that's caused you terrible pain. Now, I just heard, someone's flow of blood has just ceased. That is out of, out of other flow of blood. It's not that time for you, but out of other, it has just ceased. Now, that spinal injury in the authority of the name of Jesus, just bend like this. You won't feel any pain. You'll be shocked. No more pain. No more pain. Somebody just got healed in their left wrist. You had terrible pain on this wrist. This, just watch like this. You couldn't do like this without pain. You just got healed. Now, somebody in the left ear has been partially deaf. It's not that you've been fully deaf, but you've learned to live with that. Many times when people are talking, you turn the other ear to be able to hear well. Not even many people may know, but you know that there's something abnormal about this left ear. Your ears have just been opened in the name of Jesus. And now I don't know anybody that came in walking stick or crutches. Anybody, anybody. I'd like you to believe God. The only reason you will go back with it is because you don't have faith. 
But Jesus said, I took, I took it. Now, there's somebody here with heart palpitations, visible heart palpitations. Now, it just disappeared in the name of Jesus. Now, somebody had some very terrible, interruptive skin rash on the top of your hand like this. You'll be shocked. Just, you'll check it now. You see it has disappeared. Jesus just took it away in the name of Jesus. Somebody, you couldn't stand for this long. You've been standing longer than normal. You are shocked. You couldn't stand for this long without pain. But now in the name of Jesus Christ, you can see there's no more pain because he took it away from you. Someone has been using glasses here. Now take off those glasses. You believe God for it. That's one of the things you said, Lord, I must be healed today. Take it out. You discover that images you couldn't see, letters you couldn't see. You can now see clearly. In the name of Jesus. Someone had a problem in their tooth canal. Very strange pain you've been going through. You just got healed. In the name of Jesus, it has taken place. It's very strange. It has taken place. Now, there's somebody here as well. You had a visible hole. You could touch it with your tongue. You could feel that hole in your tooth with your tongue. And when you put your tongue on it, there is terrible pain. Now, put your tongue there. You discover it has been filled supernaturally. Now, these things God always does. People many times are shy. People many times are afraid. But if God says it, for who said it and it cometh to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Now there's somebody here. This is a very strange miracle. You've had very terrible pain in your, in your private path region. This kind of testimony it takes boldness to be able to say terrible pain in your private path region. You've not even gone for a diagnosis yet. But it's a strange pain. Now, oh, thank you, Lord. Somebody with enlarged prostrate. Yes. They are already fearing that it is cancer. But the God I know takes cancer before cancer cancels. He has the capacity. Thank you, Lord. Now, now that pain is gone. That terrible pain in that private part region is gone. In the name of Jesus. Somebody else here, you came this morning and you've been looking at yourself. You, you've bloated for one reason or the other. You can't explain why. I wonder what is all this? Now, just check yourself supernaturally. Do you think God is concerned about your feelings? Yes. If moving around makes you feel odd, you say, no, I'll take care of it. I took it. I took it. Now, there's somebody here who has been hearing strange voices for a while. Strange voices telling you to do terrible things, including tell telling you to curse God. Now, you just check it. That strange voice, it has no capacity to withstand light. Every darkness flees at the, at, at the introduction of light. Now, you just, those voices have ceased. A number of people with terrible migraine. I'm talking terrible migraine. You check yourself right now. Every trace of it has gone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody here, all the symptoms of high blood pressure, all of them. I used to have it. All the symptoms. I knew the day God healed me before I went back to test. Because all the symptoms, all the, sim <laughs> all the symptoms you came in here with have disappeared. Now, begin to do what you couldn't do, everybody. Do what you had your hand placed there. Now, begin to do everything you couldn't do. You won't feel any pain. I'm talking of Jesus taking something. Who is the devil to put it back on you? He took it. You were ignorant before. Now you know. You won't allow Jesus to take it. And the devil claimed he brought it back. Everything you came in here with are lying symptoms. They have no authority, no power to withstand light. Begin to do what you couldn't do. Somebody had terrible waist pain. Just check yourself. You are shocked. Now, everyone that came with a negative medical verdict, including high cholesterol, right now, just go back this week. Go and do your checkup. You'll be shocked. The doctor will look at you and say, what did you do? And you tell him, I did nothing. You will tell him, Jesus did it all. He said, who is Jesus? Then you explain to him how Jesus took away from you that sickness, that pain. Now, somebody has had terrible throat pain. Terrible throat pain. Now, it's gone. You just very strangely is gone. Now, that individual with lump, there's a woman here, lump on the breast, check it, it's gone. Um, nobody has a hand. Only Jesus is a healer. There are two children who came to this main auditorium with terrible fever. Parents, check them now. You'll be shocked. There's no trace of that fever in the name of Jesus. God just healed somebody again of stuttering tongue. Just speak, you'll be shocked. You are speaking freely like you have never done. He has touched you. I vow to give you every glory, Lord. You know, not even in secret. Will I? Now, somebody knee pain just disappeared. Now, the moment you discover your healing, just start coming out. 
It's telling me that many are still getting healed while others have been healed. Just you discover <coughs> that pain, that sickness, that strain you came here with is gone. Just rush out. All we are doing is giving God the glory. That's recognizing the doer. It's not just what was taken, it is who took it. And his name is Jesus. Jesus took it from you. Jesus took it from you. Somebody came with general body weakness. You are wondering where did this strength come from? It came from him. For we have not a high priest that is not touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Oh yes, all kinds of miracles, all kinds of signs, all kinds of wonders. You came with any walking aid, drop it right now. Take that first step of faith. You discover with each step, strength is restored. Thank you, Lord. 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 Miracles are taking place. Thank you, Lord. Just make your way from anywhere you are, everywhere you are, just come. It's, it's a strange moment. God touch you. If you won't check yourself, you can't find out. A touch just come. Now, if there's anybody that came with any aid of any kind, just drop it and come forward. I know when Jesus is in the house and he's here right now. Jesus is here right now. Jesus is here right now. Somebody has had trouble breathing. Now, just try taking a deep breath. You discover that your lungs are clear. They are free right now. Quickly come, quickly come. Somebody, let's clap our hands as we receive this instant miracles in the first service. He touched me and me. Now, hold it. Raise those papers up regarding any other area. Now, some that are up here, because of, of course I told you, don't write down any healing needs. But you have that paper, raise it up right now. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because miracles are no accidents. They are the confirmation of the word we receive and believe. Miracles are no accidents. They are the deliberate acts of God brought to bear by the desperate faith of men. Miracles are no accidents. They are God's response to the obedience of his people. But only those who believe in miracles can ever experience them. Therefore, I decree with your papers lifted up, everything you wrote down as a request for a special miracle, within the next seven days, before you return back next Sunday, including hardcore immigration cases, I decree in the name of the Lord Jesus, they are returning back with you next Sunday as a testimony. Someone is believing God for miracle children. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is very strange. Somebody here will be shocked. Between now and next Sunday, you'll be confirmed pregnant. Someone that has been frustrated in their business or career, in the authority of the name of Jesus, on this day of special miracles, I decree net breaking, boat sinking, enemy angering, and friend calling order of business breakthrough. Every area of your life where you have suffered any form of misfortune in this special miracle service, I decree every such misfortune turned around in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank Wave it up and give him thanks for it. More testimonies, please. More testimonies. Quickly rush out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My God. My God. Amazing. 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 Please, everyone that has a special healing testimony, just step on this first tears and face the congregation. Let me have that, please. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God, my God, my God.
Praise the Lord. Now, let's, let's try and take a few, particularly those that were direct confirmations. How many heard the word of knowledge that somebody's tooth is getting filled? They came fee had a terrible toothache with a hole in his tooth on the left side for five years. How many years? Now, please carry the mic too. As I mentioned, just raise your hand. Is this true or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have not been able to bite anything on this side, this left side, for over five years. And you could feel it with your tongue. So when you said we should put our tongue there, I didn't realize that I just put my tongue there and the hole is not there anymore. Somebody give Jesus a praise. Now, I may not call your names very well, uh, but please just bear with, with us. All right? Who is that person who had um, arthritis? I'm trying to look for that. All right? How long have you had that, please? Give her the mic, please. A couple of years. In my lower back. In, in your lower back. Knees as well. And you are in the medical field, right? <laughs> yes, sir. For two to three years. Now, do what you couldn't do. You, you had those pains before. Oh, yeah. Are you just watching? Give the Lord a praise. <laughs> now, this is amazing. He's shocked, but I will call him out. The associate pastor who is carrying Mike has had left hand wrist pain for two years. Yes, sir. It's been on and off. Um, I even did scan on it, um, x ray. Face, said, face, face, let them see. And they said nothing is wrong with it, but I feel that pain each time I do something like I carry something heavy. I always feel that pain. And each time I walk, I feel the pain like it's been there for that long. They just said I should go and take pain medication. And it will go better. It's never left. And today, after Pastor mentioned it, he said left. I said, This must be me. He said left. He didn't say right. He said left wrist pain. I said, This must be me. I started doing like this. I could not do like this before. And now I can do it. No pain. And you glad God pain. is not only healing members, but touching our pastors as well. Amen. Now, somebody, Jennifer Kalu, came with severe eye ache. And could not even roll her eyes up. Who is that person? Just lift your hands. She said after she was prayed for, she can now roll her eyes 360 degrees. Hallelujah. I felt no pain or dryness. She said I didn't even use glasses to write this testimony. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. <laughs> now you discover God has taught you as well. Pastor Chi, quickly come and read some of this. Um, that will help us be faster at what we are doing. Give Jesus the praise. Amen. I've read the three that I have here. So you can take this. Um, brother Joseph Abeka had came in church with much heaviness, but now he's relieved from that pain. Where is he, please? He's a first timer. I saw that on the testimony. Yes, and he's a first timer too. Give Jesus a praise. Because not too George came in with chest congestion and after that ministration, that church chest congestion is disappeared. And Samina too, Tom, Tommy, she came in with back pain and was radiating right to the back and that pain has disappeared now. Amen. Econ, socially, she came in with back pain and that back pain has gone. Jesus if you're the one, just back. lift up your right hand. Adua, he came in with shoulder and heart pain and it has disappeared. He has the been there for three weeks. Who is the person? Asia. All right. For how long? How long, please? For three weeks. Three weeks. Give the Lord Aminat the praise. Aluma, Alufami, Aminat Alufami came in with serious stomach pain and that pain has disappeared now. Amen. Sunny Oye de Po, he came in, Sarah, came in with migraine, and for one week now, that migraine has disappeared. Amen. Um, Robert Ndefo, Ndefo, God love, Ndefo, he came in here with excruciating back pain, and that back pain has disappeared. Amen. It has been there for three months. Kate, 
chuku deze came in with bloating stomach and that stomach has deflated. The gas has gone down. The stomach has gone down. Fami, uh, Temitope came in here with left-sided tooth, toothache. That toothache has disappeared. Headache to disappeared, never to return back. Are you clapping for all that he has done? Now lift up your hands, stand on your feet, everyone. I declare again, within the next seven days, everything you put on that paper as a special miracle request, these are just healings in the body. That's confirmation that God has already started working on all the other issues. I decree within the next seven days, you will be standing here testifying. Indeed, this week ahead of you is a special week, never to be forgotten. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name. Your week is blessed. All you lay your hands upon to do shall prosper. This coming week, you will have enough reason to celebrate. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.